I'm Carolee Brackheiser of Carolee Specialties and Hill Creek Fiber Studio. Welcome to our video on using the continuous strand weaving method on the rectangle frame loom. Weaving on the rectangle frame loom is a little more complex than on weaving on the triangle or the square looms. Um, so we will walk you through it on this video. The uh, dimensions on a rectangle loom need to be some multiple, the length needs to be some multiple of the width because we are in fact weaving squares side by side along the length of the rectangle. At Hill Creek Fiber Studio, we have developed three different sizes of rectangle looms. A 20 inch travel loom, a 30 inch travel loom, and, and my son Carl Spriggs has developed an adjustable seven foot rectangle which adjusts to 21 different sizes, all in which the length is some multiple of the width. Um, we will first start by showing you some of the items that you can make on a rectangle loom and then I'll walk you through step by step how to start the process, how to finish the process, and perhaps some design ideas that you'll enjoy along the way. Here are a few examples of items that we've woven on various rectangle looms. As you can see, just the basic rectangle, if you change colors near the center of the side, then that change of color automatically makes a diamond pattern all the way through your piece. You can use that as an advantage. When you put pieces together, these diamonds will match up. I'll show you that in a later. There are many things you can do with a rectangle. You can just fold them origami style to make different pouches and pockets and purses, pillows and so forth. This is a simple glasses case done on the little 20 inch rectangle. You can put two or more rectangles together end to end. Here's where the uh, little seam is. You can hardly see it. Um, this was done with a yarn that will shrink um, along with a yarn that doesn't shrink to create a seersucker pucker. You can see where the, the puckering occurs for a long fashion scarf. This is a piece that's three rectangles long sewn end to end that I use for um, necktie or you can use as a short fashion scarf. This is a, a piece woven with two of the 30 inch rectangles sewn end to end for a longer scarf um, showing a color blending technique, blending very gradually from one color into another and then adding fringes on it. You can attach rectangles long side to long side this is three of the small 20 inch rectangles put together for placemat. Notice how the changes in the color matches up when you put them together. This is a fashion accent that I call a peplum bodice um, using 10 of the smallest rectangles put together. Notice in the front I've done a little lino lace along the diagonals and on the back where the rectangles line up with that little diamond, the diamonds match up to make a lattice. These pieces are part of a skirt and slip combination that I'm creating. Um, this is for the waistband for the slip. It's two pieces sewn end to end and washed and fulled till the fabric is fairly firm for a waistband. This is a piece that's not been washed yet and you can see the difference in the width especially um, in the washed and the unwashed. This is the body of the slip, which is eight panels wide, sewn just two-thirds of the way from there to there. This will be gathered and um, fulled around the waistband to draw it in uh, and then attach it to the waistband. This will be the skirt um, to go over the slip just shown. Again, the waistband was woven on the 20-inch rectangles and the skirt panels on the 30 inch rectangles with a little bit of uh, lino lace in there. Weaving on the smaller rectangle looms, um, as you can see, this is loom is four times, the length is four times the width. Um, to make this convenient for you, We've marked the colored nails where you're going to be moving your yarn. Remember, we're going to be going across the diagonal of each square as we go across the loom. 
Now there's some tools that make it handy. The locker hook tool I strongly recommend. There's a deep crochet hook on one end and a large tapestry eye on the other end. Both ends of the tool come in handy and I'll show you that as we go. Uh, other tools include a weaving pick and wooden hook tools. Um, you probably don't need the, those for this tiny loom, but for when, you go, when we get to the larger looms, they'll come in real handy. Um, to start weaving, you'll start with a slip knot. Make a loop and then pull that loop through the first, that first circle and put that slip knot right over the corner nail. Now we're going to turn on each of these nails, and we're weaving across the diagonal of that first square. Then come up to the next nail, which is the diagonal of the second square. And then the diagonal of the third square, and up to the top right corner. Catch that nail just to the left. We're going counterclockwise, and then each of the nails that we catch are just to the left of the first nail. Now we have two warp threads laid in, and we're ready to start weaving. Now the premise with a continuous strand weaving method is that you're weaving loops and each magical loop forms both the warp and the weft directions of your weaving. So that loop is going to weave, you just bend the yarn, weave it under the first warp thread that you put in. There's your loop and you can catch the loop on the top nail. Now here's the tricky part with the uh, rectangle weaving. At this point, in order to keep your weave structure going over and under every one thread at a time, we need to twist this loop to the right before we weave over these two threads. So we twisted the loop. We're going to catch the weaving side of your loop. Now think of your loop as having the weaving side and the trailing side. That trailing side is just going to be a lazy end. You, he doesn't, you don't pay attention to him at all during your weaving. Now when we're going to weave uphill, we're going to take that loop and turn it to the left or counterclockwise before we weave over and under. Now put the weaving leg of your loop on the next nail. And again, don't pay attention to the trailing leg. He's just trailing. Before we weave across the bottom again, we're going to twist the loop to the right or clockwise before we weave. Weave over and under. Catch that weaving leg on the next nail. Now you've woven in four places. Once at the beginning, that's one, two, three, and four. That takes care of the weaving for your four squares. Now all you have to do is put the yarns on the next nails. The weaving's already done, so move your yarn up to those two nails. Now come down and keep each yarn parallel. Your lazy leg, now you just catch the next nail. Move your hands over and catch your lazy leg on the other side of this weaving. You place him on that nail. Now catch the yarn on this side, and catch it there and there. That's the fun part to weave our next loop. Catch the next side nail. Weave under, over, under, and bend the yarn. There's your magical loop. Catch the top nail. Bring your loop down, and now before you weave across the next area, twist that loop to the right. You'll weave under, over, under, over. Catch the nail. And again, just pay attention to your weaving leg. Let that trailing leg just go straight all the way through. Weaving uphill, you'll turn your loop counterclockwise before you start weaving. Now, if you turn the loop the wrong direction and weave, you'll wind up with two threads going under in a row instead of alternating every other thread. So pay attention to what your weaving looks like when you turn your loop. If you turn the loop the correct way, your weaving is under, over, under, over, just like it should be.
<clears throat> catch the nail and again just pay attention to the weaving leg let the trailing leg just follow as you're weaving downhill turn your loop clockwise to the right before you weave catch the loop now you've woven your four different places so now just place the yarns they've already been woven okay continue weaving in that manner if you want to change colors change colors on the left side of the loom <clears throat> Let me show you. I'm going to add some purple now. Now we've, we've cut the first color long enough to be a fringe if you choose to. Take your new color and just bend it. Weave that loop by itself <clears throat> up through your weaving area. Then take the two tails, your old color and your new, and do an overhand knot to keep them together. Slip that knot right over the next nail on the side, and now you're ready to continue with your weaving. <clears throat> the new color, as you're coming downhill, remember to turn to the right. Lift every other thread, catch your loop, and bring it through. Trailing leg is just leave, uh, running behind. Now turn the loop to the left, going uphill. Turn the loop to the right, coming downhill. And place the yarns on their respective nails. You'll notice where the new color is being placed. It's on the outside of the original color, on both the top and the bottom of the loom. <clears throat> Okay. Now, if you happen to change your colors right on the very middle nail, you'll wind up with little diamonds. When your weaving gets to the point where you're almost finished, I'm going to show you on this other loom. You'll notice your trailing leg um, is not going straight across your loom anymore. As you come around the corner, make sure you have plenty of extra slack. So you don't squish the points of your little triangles on the downhill or the uphill side of your triangle. Again, I'm catching the weaving leg, turning the loop counterclockwise because I'm going uphill. This isn't quite enough length to get all the way to the end, so I'm going to bring in some more slack and leave that slack up there so it doesn't squish the top of that point. <clears throat> 
twisting it again to the right because I'm coming downhill. Here's where a weaving pick would come in handy. Catch that nail of your trailing legs and adjust the tension. Don't pull too tight. At this point, we have one more loop to weave and then a single thread down through the middle. So I'll weave one more loop and then you, um, there are a couple things you can do there at the middle. One thing I like to do is to do a little lino lace down through the middle and I'll show you that after I weave this loop. Notice I'm attempting to keep the two strands parallel to each other so they don't twist in this tight space towards the end, it's real easy for that to twist. Again, pull in plenty of slack. And this is the weaving leg here in this hand, so I'm going to catch that nail and I'm going to weave with it, so I'm going to turn the loop around. No, I don't have enough length for the end, so I'll pull in some more slack. Okay, this is our weaving leg, so we'll adjust that tension first. Turn the loop so the weaving leg goes up. The weaving leg is always on the right side of your weaving. The lazy leg is always on the left side of your weaving. This weaving area I'm calling a stalactite because it's hanging from the ceiling, <laughs> so to speak. The weaving leg is going to be on the right hand side of this weaving. When you come up and go around the corner, the weaving leg, I'm catching on the nail, the weaving leg is still going to be on the right hand side of the stalagmite, which is on the bottom. So regardless of whether you're weaving uphill or downhill, the weaving leg will be on the right hand side of the grouping that you're weaving against. kind of important to keep that in mind because in this tight space towards the end it's easy to get confused as to which side of that loop is doing actually doing the weaving and where it belongs. Okay, that's the end of the last loop. Got one nail left and that's for your very last thread. It's just marking the space there. It's not going to go around that nail. I'm placing the trailing leg now 
and see the trailing leg is on the left side of this woven area. The trailing leg is also on the left side of this top weaving area. Again, the trailing leg is on the left side of this lower area. Okay, we're ready for our very last loop, or row, not loop. So we're going to measure the length that we need. And cut or break your yarn long enough for that length. Now you could just weave that last row singly. Now the one thing I like about the locker hook is that the opposite end of the hook is a nice eye. So you can thread that eye and just needle weave. For this I turn the loom around so I can weave from right to left. And if you wanted to just fill in the center with a plain weave, just go over, under, over, under like you're needle weaving like this. But as I mentioned before, I like to do a lino lace down through the middle often. Not always, but often I do. And for this nice white material, I'm making a lacy effect for a project. So I'll show you how I do the lino lace. I'll thread the eye. And if you take a look at all your crosswise pieces, you've got pairs of threads. If I start from here, for example, the first thread weaves under the row on the top, or actually under on both sides. The next thread is on top of, the next one is under, and the next one's over. So you've got pairs of under and over threads. Um, on this very first leg of our you know, lace, there's an odd number of threads. Um, we're starting with an under thread and we're ending with an under thread. So for this first row of lino lace, I'm going to take three threads in the grouping. I'll come up to the third thread and catch it with a hook, bring it down across the bottom two threads, and then scoot under those two threads. Then I'm going to come up to the second of each pair, catch that one thread, bring it around and under the lower thread. So from here on out, every even numbered thread is going to cross back over its previous odd numbered thread. So here I go. I'm going to catch the even numbered thread, pull it down across the odd number, and then scoot the hook under. Go ahead and pick up the even numbered thread, bring it back across its previous odd numbered thread, and then scoot the hook under. I'll usually do four or five of these in a row. and then bring the thread through those crossed threads to make your lino lace. What creates this lace pattern is that twisted thread forces this, the threads next to it apart to create that open lacy look. Lino lace is um, a weave structure that's used in lots of types of weaving. I've just adapted it to uh, the continuous strand weaving because I like its look. It adds a different texture. I come around the corner. I'll catch the nail before I go on. These other three sections all have even numbered pairs of threads so I don't need to do that special beginning like I did the first row. All right, we're ready to set up the large adjustable rectangle loom. This loom adjusts to 21 different sizes. So when you're first laying out the four boards, um, lay them out in this sort of manner so that the extension for your adjustments will move out to the left lower side, the top right side, and the two sideboards can adjust 
up or down this way, the extra going up, and on the right hand side, the board there will extend down. Your first, we have a chart that shows all the different possibilities of your adjustment. The chart is found on the inside of the um, rectangle frame loom brochure as well as on the instructions for the rectangle loom which come with your loom that you've purchased. This chart will show you that you have seven settings of the width that you can choose from. These numbers represent the number of nails along that width. At the 20 nail width size, every 20 nails is approximately 7 inches. Um, choose first the width of the project that you'd like to weave. Then once you've chosen the width, follow the row across and we'll show you the different lengths that you can choose that will work with that width in order to weave with the continuous strand weaving method. Because again, we're weaving squares across the loom. So, um, for example, 20 nails will go into two, to 140, but it won't go into 150. So you couldn't ch choose the 150 nail length to go with the 20 nail width, and so on. We're going to choose the 30 nail width, and on the 30 nail width, you see we've got four different lengths to choose. We've decided to choose the 210 nail length because 30 will go into 210 seven times. We're going to set this at the 30 nail width. The first increment here is 20 nails worth. And then for each an additional increment, you see the colored nails? That marks off 10 more nails in each increment. So we're going to go up to this 30 nail width. We're going to move this first board, put in a bolt there there and attach with the wing nut. The joins are routed out so the curve of the, each board will fit into a curved um, join. We've set this width at the 100, I mean at the 30th nail wide and we're going to set the length at the 210th nail long. The total length is 240 nails, so we're going to move down to 30, 220, 210. This will be the setting for the length. Be sure your boards are lined up so that the bolts will go in smooth and even. The wing nut will fit right on the back. Now come to the other end of the board, loom, and again we're going to choose the 30th nail here. That's 10, 20, 30. Excuse me, the 210th nail here for this one. Then we'll put the loom on the stand at a comfortable height. As you remember, when we were weaving on the travel rectangle loom, the travel rectangle looms are uh, set so that the length is four times the width. So as we wove on that setting, we started the weaving on the top left corner and zigzagged across the loom, winding up on the top right corner. That was an even number of repeats or squares across the loom. We've purposely set up the adjustable loom so we have an odd number of squares across the loom, 30 nails wide by 210 nails long. 30 goes into 210 seven times, so we are in effect weaving across the diagonals of seven squares side by side. So we will wind up on the bottom right corner. We'll start out by taking your yarn, leaving a length long enough to be a fringe and make your slip knot. Make a loop, pull a loop through that loop, put that on the corner nail. Now, uh, these nails are marked so they're slightly different color every tenth nail. We're at the thirtieth nail wide, so we're going to count over thirty nails to the right. Ten, twenty, thirty, and we'll bend at that nail. Now we're coming to the top board, we'll go over to the sixtieth nail. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And now the 90th nail on the bottom. So that's 60, 
70, 80, 90. The 120th nail on the top, so this was 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. The 150th nail at the bottom, so we we're at 90, 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. The 180th nail at the top. Fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, and the two hundred and tenth nail at the bottom. We're going to wind up on the left nail at each bend, so we will go clockwise around this bottom corner nail. Bring your yarn parallel to the first, catching each nail to the left of the original. up to the sideboard. Now we've finished putting in two rows of warp and we're ready to weave our magical loop for the continuous strand weaving. We'll bend the yarn and weave that magical loop under the right warp thread. Take that bend and catch the next nail on the top. Then as we weave down and across this uh, structure here, we'll turn our loop to the right, weave over and under, catch the weaving end of our leg, weaving leg of our loop on the bottom nail. Now this is our trailing leg of the loop, so he's not going to do anything except trail along behind. Now we'll, we're going to weave up, so we're going to turn the loop to the left, or counterclockwise, before we weave over and under catch the nail. Now as we weave across the next section, downhill to the right, we'll again twist the loop to the right, go over and under, catch the bottom nail. Notice how that trailing leg just trails behind, only we're paying attention to just the weaving leg. As you weave up, we'll twist to the left or counterclockwise and weave over and under. As we weave down, we twist to the right, weave over and under. As you weave uphill, you twist to the left again, over and under, catch the nail. Now we've woven seven times, so now we're on the right hand side of the loom, that's the end of your loop. The other side, this trailing leg of the loop, is already woven, so you don't need to weave again. Just place the end of the loop on the respective nails. And now go back and place that lazy trailing leg where he belongs, keeping all the threads parallel to each other. So at this point, you can move your arm over to the other side of the weaving before you bring your yarn parallel and on its proper nail. This is the fun part. That lazy leg's already woven. All you have to do is place him on the right legs, on the right nails. Oops. Now we're ready to weave again. Continue weaving as we did on the travel trilume and refer to that section when you want to change colors. It's just one rectangle folded in a V and draped over the shoulders, tied under the arm to make a tabard vest. This is a very simple scarf woven on the rectangle loom at a fairly narrow size, a narrow size and one of the longer lengths, made out of a nice snuggly, loopy yarn. Very fast and easy project. This is a Voyager sash. Uh, woven long enough to wrap around your waist twice before tying um, with finer and firmer yarns but woven with two loops on each nail to close in the set 
and make it a tighter weave structure for a firmer sash. It's dyed with cochineal, indigo, and logwood. Long fringes are added and twisted at the end. This was woven at the narrowest setting and the longest length, seven inches by seven feet long. This is an elegant neutral wrap woven on one of the larger settings. As a finishing touch, down through the center last row, I did a lino lace to dress it up a bit. This is a zigzag scarf woven on the rectangle loom, the large adjustable loom. Instructions on this and many other wearables, plus projects for the home, including rugs, curtains, blankets, pillows, table runners, and more. Look forward to the upcoming book on the continuous strand weaving method for triangles, squares, and rectangle frame looms. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have further questions, please contact us. Once you start thinking in triangles, squares, and rectangles, the possibilities are limitless. Happy weaving!